Hello guys, Gary J here. Today we're going to be looking at a fighting knife. A fighting knife. And this is a beautiful fighting knife made by John Harbuck. John Harbuck. He's been making knives for over 35 years, a master knife maker. And uh, I commissioned him to make me a knife the way that I wanted it made. And uh, and he did a great and wonderful job on it. And I wanted a fighting knife, too. Uh, just a, a little story about the fighting knife. Uh, you probably wonder why does anybody want a fighting knife. Well, there's a lot of history in the, uh, the world of fighting knives. And uh, if you like knives, you like the history of all kinds of knives. And so uh, this particular fighting knife right here was something that... Uh, uh, I had envisioned myself. Now, John Harbuck uh, made this knife, and he has what's called the F-14 fighting knife, F-14 fighting knife, which looks probably 95% like this knife right here. Um, with his uh, fighting knife, the F-14, the big difference, I guess, uh, between the two knives is that uh, I wanted this clip, which is this part up here, I wanted that to be razor sharp and go two-thirds the length of the blade. His uh, F-14 clip comes all the way down to here, so it's kind of like a double-edged blade. And I wanted this to be razor sharp, and F-14 is razor sharp. And I think on the end of the blade right here, uh, it has more of an upward, kind of like a tanto, just a little bit of that. And the F-14, what I've seen of that, it's more like a, a round edge like this one right here, more so than that, what I've seen. So, uh, and then, you know, you determine the length of the handle, the length of the blade uh, may be different because I have particular specifications on that. But uh, interestingly, I had uh, been thinking about... Uh, having a fighting knife made and I drew it out and then I used a thousand dollar Adobe Photoshop program at the time to create a knife that looked very similar to John Harbuck's F-14 fighting knife and uh, when I got through with it I had a picture that looked pretty much like this in my mind my point was different and a couple little differences that I had uh in my mind about the knife and uh, when I was looking for a knife maker I found a knife which was the F-14 and I looked it up and it was made by Mr. John Harbuck and uh, the knife I had in mind that I had uh, made on the computer looked pretty close to the F-14 in some way so uh, I sent Mr. Harbuck a picture of the knife that I generated and told him, and I had all the specifications of it and stuff like that, and a picture of what the finished knife would look like. And I said, "Can you build that?" And he said, uh, "Yeah, he he could build it." And because um, it looked a lot like his F14, which is probably 95% of it looks like the F14 of what I've seen of his F14 knives. Anyway, uh, he. Uh, he said he would be glad to do that. Most knife makers don't like to, to make knives that customers or people uh, design themselves because they usually have their own signature knives that they make all the time, and it's easy for them, you know, to make their the knives they always make, so that's all they want to make. And I understand that. That's not a problem. Uh, but then you have some knife makers like John Harbuck. If you would have given him any kind of design, uh he likes the challenge. He would be willing to make it generally, um, you know. And one of the things about making a knife, you have to decide, uh, you know, what kind of steel do you want the blade to be? What kind of uh, handles do you want or scales do you want? What There are many different materials for the handle, many different types of blades, to, material to choose from, different types of steel, designs of the blade, all that stuff. And... Um, so I decided that I wanted a blade that was 
eight and a quarter inch long and I wanted a handle five and a quarter inch long and I wanted the tank the uh, guard here in a secondary guard here which the f-14 that uh, fighter knife that he has has this guard and the secondary guard and again looks pretty much like this and the handle is a little different on the f-14 and uh, the pictures I've seen just a little bit different not much and uh, so they're pretty close in that sense and so uh, with the little alterations that I made on uh, the design of the blade length and the clip here and the handle material and stuff like that uh, it suited me real well I used a G10 fiberglass on the handle is what I told him to use because it's water resistant. Uh, it's also uh, oil resistant and acid resistant G10 fiberglass. So it's pretty tough stuff. And the blade here is ATS-34, ATS-34, which he uses a lot of ATS-34, which is a high carbon steel with some stainless steel properties to it that helps make it corrosive resistant but it will rust because it is high carbon and so uh, he made uh, this really beautiful knife and I had him make a second one at the same time too which is uh, which has like a six inch uh, blade on it instead of the eight and a half and it, the blade on that one and the um, uh, handle is a little bit different than what I saw on the uh, F-14 that he has. But uh, Mr. John Harbuck does such great work, and he's very reasonable, super reasonable on price uh, for the quality of work that he does. And one of the things, too, I, I like is that it's a full tang right here. You can see the tang right here and tang right here, less chance of breaking. And... Um, a lanyard hole here which you really want a lanyard uh to wrap around uh wrap around your wrist with a a, a string or rope or whatnot and uh, if you watch the program uh forged by fire you see that uh there are three things they look at with any kind of knife that a knife should be able to thrust and pierce and certainly a double-edged blade like this that's razor sharp on both sides can pierce and thrust um, for my use. And it should be able to slash. And this is a pretty thick steel right here, about 3 16th of an inch, I think. And uh, it can certainly slash being razor sharp and with that kind of curvature to the blade there at the top. And the third thing is it should be able to chop. Now, on uh, Forge by Fire, that third uh, tenant they use of chopping, they chop a big uh, ham bone, which is brutal on any blade. They, you know, they try to see if they can break the blade. I mean, they ruin the, the blade edge beating on a the bone. There's no reason to do that with a fighting knife, of course. Mr. Harbuck told me, do not chop bone. Do not chop bones with this knife. You know, if you want to disassemble an animal, you, you go to the joints which are easy to cut through. But uh, this would be one test that, that you would not really want to do on a blade like this. It's kind of a hollow ground blade too, so it's not meant for chopping. You know, uh, but it's a beautiful knife in so many ways and uh, for a fighting knife. Again, you may ask, uh, why in the world would you want a fighting knife? Well, I'll tell you a story behind that. Uh, there was a movie called Iron Mistress. Iron Mistress made in 1952 with the key actor was Alan Ladd. And the movie Iron Mistress is all about Jim Bowie's knife. It's about Jim Bowie and his knife, which we know today as the Bowie knife. And uh, his knife was used as a fighting knife. Now, back in the time of Jim Bowie, he was born in 1776. 
and lived to 1836, died at the age of 39 at the Alamo with David Crockett. Um, he lived a very colorful life, an extraordinary man. Get a chance to read the biography of, of Mr. Bowie. The thing about uh, him uh, in history, Jim Bowie uh, had a knife fight at what was called the uh, Sandbar. And uh, this particular place, uh, he was shot twice, stabbed by a knife, and then run through with a cane sword, like a walking cane a sword inside of it. And uh, the guy that run the sword through him, according to history, uh, had shot him too. And uh, Jim Bowie was able to use his knife, which you would call, I guess, Bowie knife from him. And he disemboweled that man and killed him and killed a second man. And uh, the others left him alone. According to some historians, that's the way it went down. And uh, he became kind of famous as a knife fighter. And uh, in the movie, though, uh, that's the, that's supposed to be the real story, the Sandbar incident. But in the movie, uh, Iron Mistress, Alan Ladd does a really good job of, um, of portraying Jim Bowie. But there's a lot of things in that movie, too. But it's all centered around a knife that looks you know, it's a, it's a fighting knife. It doesn't look anything like this. The real Jim Bowie knife, according to historians, looked probably like a big butcher knife, big, huge butcher knife or big camping knife like we might see. Back in those days, uh, they didn't have uh, pistols like they, they did in the Western times. Uh, they had single-shot pistols, which were not very accurate, and they were very expensive, and only the rich could afford them. But everybody could afford a knife, kind of like a mountain man's knife, a big knife like a mountain man's knife. So back in those days, they carried around knives like the Western cowboys carried around six shooters because they couldn't afford any kind of pistol like that. They hadn't been invented. And so their knives had to be able to uh, protect them uh, from other people, had you know, to... Uh, kill animals, to skin animals, to cut brush, to do all kinds of stuff. So those were pretty good sized blades on those knives and things like that. So they, they used knives a lot back in those days. But the movie uh, is just a really great movie, Iron Mistress. And uh, one of the things that Jim Bowie did in that movie, which is Hollywood, but uh, he went to a metal smith, a blacksmith, had him build him a knife to his dimensions and uh, told him he wanted a knife that was unbreakable. And so the guy had part of a meteorite that he put into the melting process of the steel, which hopefully would have qualities that would make the knife unbreakable. And the man made a beautiful blade for him in the movie. And uh, again, The Iron Mistress is about Jim Bowie's trouble that he had with that knife and uh, you know some of the knife fights that he was in and stuff like that but anybody that loves knives and in the history of knives and so forth uh, you'd really love the iron mistress if you hadn't seen that again 1952 with alan land so anyway that kind of inspired me to want a fighting knife and to kind of design it a little bit myself but uh, this knife right here is about 95 percent uh, I would guess the same knife as the F-14 that John Harbuck makes. So if you want a knife like that, look up F-14 on the uh, John Harbuck page, and uh, he can make you a blade like that, and he can change the clip and the length of the blade and the handle material, whatever you want. And uh, he does wonderful work. And these are heat-treated by Boss, B-O-S, Boss is known for his heat treatment, probably one of the best in the world. He does all of buck knives. It, the last I heard, he was doing all of buck knives on the heat treating. Heats them up to a really, really high temperature, holds them that, that way for a period of time, depending on the type of steel that you use. 
and then he cools them down a cryogenic thing, super low temperatures for a period of time, then lets them um, thaw out and, and get back to room temperature. Does something to the molecular structure. It's all scientific what Boss does. And so John Harbuck, Harbuck sends all of his blades uh, to, to Boss to have them tempered and so forth. So you're really getting a high-quality knife. And one thing uh, I think I mentioned maybe, this knife cost me about two-thirds less than what I thought it would cost. It cost me about two-thirds less than what I thought it would cost for him to make for me. So uh, he's really, really reasonable on price, and anybody who's been making knives for over 35 years has to be, you know, a super master knife maker. So check out John Harbuck. Appreciate you guys watching. Take care. Have a great day. Gary J.